Hey everyone, Sacktoth again. I just wanted to share with you guys a conversation I had with Gotta about game design balance and some of the changes we were planning on making in the last patch. This was recorded before the last patch, but it touches on some of the changes that are still upcoming as well. But we start the conversation off with a conversation about design more broadly, so let's get into it. I think there's a conservatism to uh, a lot of good players that they're like the faults in the game because even the faults and the flaws in the game because they see them as essential to the mechanics of the game. Things like, you know, battleships are underpowered and phase bombs are OP, but we have fighter pushing. You can push a f battleship around using fighters and that means you can dodge phase bombs if you're good enough. And this is a really high skill curve thing. And so it becomes a thing where like this thing which is clearly a bug because we're not calculating um, mass when two units push each other correctly that it becomes a part of of uh, the mechanics of the game the counter structure of the game about what makes phase bombs and such balanced but really it's such a weird high micro technique to use that it's not might not necessarily be the best thing to stay in the game yeah yeah i, I agreed with that removal i remember that uh was um, cdo the defiant one who was arguing for it mm. Yeah, but it's definitely something that um, a lot of players uh, fall into. Just this idea that that you know, if you do any change whatsoever, it'll upset you know this this perfect ecosystem. And it's just like when you've done a lot of design on a game, you realize there is no perfect ecosystem. We're make guys, we're making this up, <laughs> like you know, um, and it can be better if you understand the implications. And you can definitely make a decision which is uh, make a bad decision. Uh, I think, for example, uh, the spinal changes. I'm not saying it's a bad decision, but the implication for range mod spinal is that really it's barely better now than five range mods and uh, a single reload mod. And that means that people who want to use range tend to use 360 mounts, which means that we're back to heavy kiter meta. Uh, well, I don't agree about the heavy kiter meta because I think it's a brawler meta and brawlers are even better against uh, uh, against 360 turret heavy kiters than they are against spinal ships i think like mm -hmm. the best counter to my plasma brawlers have been uh, emp brawlers with some uh, some pull waves and mm. some demi spinal uh, face bombs so is this the sort of is yeah. what danger is using now these emp brawler ships with a bit of phase bomb on the front is that the sort of thing you're talking about uh, yeah, that's the best counter I've seen. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm seeing those a lot. These sort of EMP ships because the uh, because you have so little energy generation on a quad damage spinal ship, you end up with uh, a ship that's really easy to EMP. Um, so I think that's another one of the weaknesses. Have you have you performed against that when you've fought it? Uh, usually, I can sort of kite them if I'm careful. Yeah, so you use afterburning jump ships, don't you? Yeah. So do you think that in order to use damage on spinal properly, you need to use like a, a jumping afterburner Zango ship? Um, I, don't th I don't think it's really going to become the meta easily because it's so hard to use. It is really hard to use, and but that's yeah. also the reason why I like the ship so much because it's so, yeah, it's so adaptable, but still it's so... You have to think very hard, a lot about how you use it. So that's a high skill curve kind of ship. Yeah. I don't think it's going to become the meta in that everyone's going to use it because it's so hard to use. It might be the th one of the theoretically best ships, though. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And yeah, and the best counter I've seen so far that it's possible that you could, like, you could equalize if you use these EMP brawlers I mentioned. If you use them and then something ranged. Then you can probably spend like if you just keep up an even number of these cheap much cheaper uh emp brawlers you can probably like get some long range ships behind it and then uh, it's going to be a more of a range combat so then we're going to engage with a lot of other ships if you're using a heavy kite fleet and you come up against these emp slow emp brawlers and plasma brawlers you're going to think oh i can always use this uh, heavy kite fleet and it's going to go really well for me yeah. And then they face me, and I come with my Sango Brawl, and they're a little fast, and, and yeah, and they're gonna end up 
being pushed off the map or I'm going to end up catching their heavy kiters and yes, win pretty easily. So I still think that uh, heavy kiters won't be a problem for my fleet. The next patch we're thinking about uh, taking the spinal range down by just like 50. Well, do you think there's going to be much impact from that sort of change? The biggest point about spinal plasma brawlers is that they're long range than torpedoes, I think. Like, that was usually I would, what I would do against Sango ships. I would just spam a bunch of uh, torpedo launchers mm -hmm. to protect my spinal kiters. So, one thing about um, the current status of the spinal mount, though, is because they no longer stack with range mods. This ship we see right here from QRTZ, it's pretty much, it's very slightly worse on DPS efficiency compared to a 30 mount. A 30 mount with five uh, range mods and a single reload mod. And it's got like maybe 10%, 8% more range than uh, five range mods and a reload mod. So it's just like, you might as well pay the extra, assuming, you know, the 30 tons and $36 or the difference would be $33. Um, it's worth being able to fire backwards, which I think it is. Otherwise, people would use 30 mounts on, on hex mod, which they don't really. Except sometimes on... on occasionally on, on weird plasma, uh, artillery compositions. Um, assuming that's worth it, it's like... It means that the, if you want to adopt a ranged composition, you really want to use heavy kiters. You want to use a 360 mount and hex mod rather than using spinals. And it means you don't have that the composition where you can bombard at a long range but if you turn around you're no longer firing instead every single long range ship which uses a bombardment composition uh can fire backwards is a heavy kiter i think that's a bit of a shame to have lost that that dynamism you know where you can actually adopt a bombardment strategy with range mods and spinal because i think the ship that quartz is using right now um I just, I just don't think it's good anymore. <laughs> I just don't think it's 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 that competitive anymore. The fact that it can't retreat in a brawler meta, it can't retreat versus advancing brawlers. I think that really hurts yeah. it so much. So yeah. the question is, if we wanted... Because I really do sort of... I don't want the best... The best ships with the best range, or the best damage at range, the most efficient ships at range, to also be all be kiters. So they're all kiters, you know. I, I would like there'd be an option at least to viably use a non-kiter variant, even if you might not necessarily choose it over the ability to fire backwards. I kind of want... <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to make just all mods be like speed coils, where it's a non-scaling bonus. <laughs> um, range mods in particular, because if you do that, you solve... I think you probably solve a lot of the problems with the stacking, because, you know, you put six... Six mods has so much more range than four mods. And four mods is the max you can get on a spinal. I mean, I, I, it can be fine for just the range value, but yeah. it wouldn't be fine for uh, the reload decrease and reload increase. That would be, it would be have weird interactions. But sure, it can it can work like the speed core. That would work. I don't see any problem with it really. Except, yeah, it would, it would yeah, make the, just it. the difference between six range mods and five range mods, and and the difference between even just one range mod. It would make a. Uh, it would compress that a little bit. I think it works so well on speed coils. I really like what it did to speed coils. Splashing a single speed coil now feels really good, uh, but getting up to the full number of like six speed coils or whatever no longer feels like. You know, you, the projectile's going so, so fast you can barely see it. Like a a speed coil, um, a speed coil torpedo ship right now, it, it can totally fight fighters and totally snipe out fighters at range. But if you're paying attention, you can dodge them. You know. How do you feel about that since you used to use a lot of those uh, speed tor torpedo ships? Uh, speed torps are still fun to use. So yeah. yeah. I think they're much more dodgeable oh, than before at max range. And, and it's much easier to make them with just like two speed coils or four speed coils. Uh, I was just going to ask, do you think um, sidewinders are a problem? So what we're thinking of doing is 10% uh, more speed on sidewinders and 30% more energy cost. I don't know, this is politics, because I really don't like uh, the game plane that Sinewinder brings. So I don't know what kind of change you could do to Sinewinder that would make me like the gameplay they promote. So if they travel yeah. faster, they're stronger, they are a little bit stronger against fighters, but they still have that delay before they hit the fighter. 
Um, but the way I've been counting them, and I've seen other people counter, is particularly the Cybermunda swarms, so the swarms of little fighters, particularly the AI controlled ones, is I just fly a single fighter in through one at a time. So I fly a single fighter through, take all of the um, Sidewinder shots, fly another fighter through, take all of the Sidewinder, fly another, and eventually they run out of energy. It does take like four or five <laughs> um, volleys, but uh, eventually you can run them out of energy. Um, and that does work. And I'm not sure whether that's really the best counter. Like that's the best thing. That's what I really want to do. Uh, the, the gameplay to be is that these can will completely destroy you, but they miss a lot and they over overkill a lot, so you can waste them that way. I'm not sure if that's you know what Sidewinder is meant to be. That's its ideal role. So I think being faster so that they actually do hit more reliably, it allows them to be a little less energy efficient, but sort of maybe it preserves that character of the best way to beat them is to waste them with fighters one at a time. I mean, the reason that Sidewinder is kind of considered problematic is because of how versatile it is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's like, yeah, it's good against fighters. And it's kind of good against kiters trying to close range. And it's good against brawl short range brawlers. And it's, yeah, it's, good. it's pretty good DPS if the enemy is trying to close, if you get close, with, get close to some battleship. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe dropping the damage on Sidewinder might be better there. It reduces the versatility. But I did want to ask yeah, you what you think about Tesla. I don't like Tesla either, really. You don't like it where it is right now, or just as a mechanic? I don't like it mechanically. I don't want to see it better than it is. You don't want to see it become sort of more meta? You don't want to see it more common in the game because you think it's less, less interesting or less fun? Yeah, less yeah. interesting and less fun. So I think that Thinky's um, Tesla ships are actually really cool. Like the way he can, as you, if you saw my, my uh, last video, the one where he comes in and he hits the unit on the edge of the pack and it bounces through the whole pack. So if the units are spread out versus Warhead or Flak, um, he only needs to take damage from one of the fighters in order to hit all of the fighters and blow them all up at once. And I think when used on a destroyer that way, it's actually really cool and really interesting because you just try and graze the edge of the pack and it arcs through all of the units. Or you try and say hit, you hit a brick on the front and it arcs through all of his fighters. And I think that's a really interesting way to do an anti-fighter weapon. That it's more sort of it's more sort of situational. It's more about sort of picking off um, picking off a spread pack of fighters and picking off say fighters spread throughout a, a pack of other battleships that are tanking for them and stuff. And I think that's interesting about it. Do you not think so? Uh, yes, as a destroyer weapon, yes. But in, I'm not sure if, not in any other application than a destroyer weapon. I think. Yeah, so one thing I thought about for changing it um, is that it stuns the first, it only does the EMP damage, we're doubling EMP damage, but they make it only do EMP damage to the first target. Because right now, it's most effective as an EMP weapon if it hits a carrier, arcs through all the fighters in that carrier grid, the carrier dumps its energy into the fighters, um, and then it's it's draining huge amounts. It drains the carrier grid, grid dry. The whole grid is now dry, and it just keeps hitting and then draining the whole carrier grid, grid dry and every single unit in the carrier grid at once, um, every single time it hits. And as I say said in that video, it was not. Uh, I don't really like that mechanic because it's like a stun lock your whole army kind of mechanic. Where if it stun locks the first target as a single target weapon, then it becomes a I'll stun this one target. You've got to kill me if you want to free this target. So you're stunning this one target, and he's got to get close to you and chase you away in order to sort of free up the target. So it becomes like a, like a sort of a stun beam where as long as it's continuously firing at that target, target that target stays stunned. Um, but it doesn't stun a whole pack. And secondly, what it does is it creates a thing where it turns that target into a lightning rod, so that it gets stuck, it can't retreat or fire back, and he can run. You can run your ship around that one target, um, arcing all the all the bolts onto everything else. So you can use it as a, a disabled lightning rod to, if anything else gets close, cl close bounce lightning off of. So do, do you think that might be more fun or better or more interesting? Yeah, that application on the destroyer sounds really fun. You can try to have a kite, for example, you trap it. And then yeah. you, yeah, and then enemy is going to be in range for longer and you're going to damage the other kiters and you trap one kite and then you go to the next kite try to get it and yeah that sounds pretty fun yeah so i sort of thought about like we were discussing how to make emp work better and I was, i've been thinking about like what do we want for single target stuns 
and one of the ideas for that is like a beam weapon which continuously fires a little bit like the way destroyers do the way flamer does where you go on and then you go onto a target and you flame it up and you sort of run around um and the same way stasis phase bomb does so if you close on a target with a stasis phase bomb you stun the target in the stasis essentially and then you launch your phase bombs and your phase bombs hit and it's we had a really interesting thing with stasis phase bombers because we don't really have stasis phase bombers so much anymore um like as a proper bomber but we used to have this interesting thing where if you could kill the bomber fast enough uh, before the phase bomb lands, it frees the ship up that it's shooting at and it can retreat uh, away from the phase bomb. Um, but if, if the sort of if the phase bomb ship can stay in range and keep that target stuck, it's not the sort of bomber which just launches a projectile and runs away. It launches a projectile and keeps on the target, trying to, you know, it has to stay there to keep to stop the, the, the um, uh, target running away from the phase bomb. Uh, so it's this really interesting thing where it's not about the instantly uncloaks. You have to kill it before it uncloaks. You know, you can kill it after it uncloaks and still have a chance to escape. So there's more there's more margins there. And so having a unit which has a single a stun bomb for a, to, against a, a stun sort of beam against a single target, it, you can sort of as long as it stays in range, it can keep stunning that target and keep that target stunned. Um, so it creates an opportunity for the player for the who who has that ship stunned. Do they want to, you know, do, try and chase that target away? Do they want to try and um, get carriers in range to res try and rescue that target a little bit? Do they want to, um, you know, just sort of cut it loose and um, let it stay stunned and maybe try and rescue it later? Or, you know, also all these things where, you know, they can maybe bring in a bomber and just jump on top of the, on top of the destroyer with a bomber and, and kill it and free the unit that way. Um, so it creates all these interesting things where you, it creates a priority t in order to free up your priority target that he's stunning it creates a priority target on his team that you have to kill. Um, but I'm not sure that Tesla is suited to that because it has like the AOE arcing damage thing. Uh, as a single target stun, it also means any unit you send, especially a fighter pack, you send to rescue a stunned unit um, gets damage arced through it. Uh, yeah, it sounds the, the single target stun Sounds interesting, but yeah, you might be right that uh, counterplay if it the Tesla orcs the other units is kind of a bit much, maybe. Sure. You could argue that, yeah. Yeah, because if you make it really like a strong anti-heavy weapon where it just can suit, it can stun a single target at a time, um, and then make it also an anti-fighter weapon that arcs and does target damage to multiple units, it's sort of like it's working cross purposes. But maybe it's it's it can just that just increases the versatility of the weapon. You can spec it for being anti single target, or you can spec it for being anti fighter. I, I, I don't know. Or you can use it. In, maybe it means that your Tesla destroyer, which frankly, even though I think he uses them a lot, they're not that good. Um, maybe it just makes them better because now they have more versatility. They can actually like stun out a single battleship, which make, means that they're an anti fighter tool and a, and sometimes sort of a bit of an anti capital tool because because they have that larger range of versatility, it makes them more viable. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's always. Yeah, I, I don't. Sorry, go ahead. But, but uh, I mean, the Tesla damage, the Tesla energy damage when it's hitting ten targets, is actually higher per weapon the energy damage than EMP is per weapon. So, so I mean, that's a, that's a thing that made uh, my. I had a Tesla carrier fleet, range model Tesla carrier fleet. I remember it. And it. Yeah, and, and it worked because Tesla did so much, uh, well, did even more damage per weapon than EMP. It was actually viable to use Tesla as an EMP weapon. And yeah, so are you thinking of bringing, keeping at the energy drain of Tesla at the same level, or are you thinking about reducing it? So to just off, not having looked at the numbers at all, I'm thinking maybe three times the current. Um, that's just pulling a number off the top of my head. I would not think that it would be a good idea to keep it at um, either the current level or make it 10 times the current level, which is the maximum bounce numbers. Um, but that's against a single target, though. So when it's splitting the damage a, a much, a bunch of, um, among a bunch, uh, pack of fighters, it would really quickly stun out the first target, then stun out the next target, then stun out the next target. It would very quickly start leaving a trail of stunned fighters behind it if they try and chase it. So that pretty much wraps it up. I want to do more sort of discussion videos like this where I'm sort of discussing design principles. It's often I do this at the end of my cast. I discuss the design principles we saw during the middle of that cast. 
but uh, this one took a lot of editing to get out because this was like an hour and a half worth of discussion that I've edited down to 20 minutes here. It was a lot of editing. In fact, there are so many cuts that you will hear the explosion sounds be completely out of sync with the gameplay footage you're watching. Uh, I don't know whether you noticed that or not. So I'm hoping to have more structured discussions in the future. Tell me if you like this sort of discussion, if you like bringing in other people, um, or the, whether you prefer me monologuing after we've just watched a, a match or even during a match, as sometimes they go off in a diversion and completely miss the action. But if you like this kind of video, tell me, or if you prefer the, um, uh, the um, casts, tell me as well. Uh, and I look forward to hearing your feedback.